Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you five things that I think is important when you're putting together an adventure van, swamper, whatever you want to call it. If there is enough interest in the subjects in the comments section, I will do a further video for you, and this will go a long way with the basic lanes and all the rest of it for these adventure lands. So I see so many people making the same mistakes and buying all the shine on Balti bits that look awesome in a car park, but they go out onto the trails and they fail. Don't make that mistake. So the first thing that I would buy is a decent set of wheels and tyres. And the reason for this is it's very, very simple. You are taking these vehicles a bit further than the average RAC van, AA van is going to recover you. And it's out of a lot of beginner's comfort zone. And it's one of them things that you won't know till you've got this wrong until you are stuck and you're phoning a friend or trying to get somebody out. This is all about being self-sufficient. So from factory, this would have come with mud tires on the steel rims because it was an ex-utility vehicle. A lot of the vans that I know you guys are gonna be buying are gonna be standard vans. So they'll come with commercial tires. Awesome for the road, not so great for everything else. The next step up, would, what would be, what came on this van when I bought it was a set of BFG All Terrains, which again is a fantastic tire. Um, it's very, very good in the wet on the motorway, things like that. However, it doesn't have the ability to self-clean in wet grass, mud, things like that, where you're going to then start to chew the ground up and you're going to need a bit more grip. It's excellent for deserts. Uh, it's excellent for anything soft like that. But as soon as it starts to get a bit boggy, you know, them kind of horrible sludgy conditions, that's when you're going to be spinning wheels up and starting to gain no momentum. I've just changed now that suits my style of uh, my adventuring to a Cooper STT Pro, which I've run on my Land Rovers for over 10 years now with zero issues. I'd even say from going from a BFG to these, it's noticeable that the sidewall is a lot thicker and a lot sturdier. Um, you can just tell on and off the road. As well as that, with it being a mud pattern, it flings mud. It really, you can hear it actually biting in and chewing into the ground to give you that bit more grip and pull you out. Um, on top of that as well, I've now gone to the new Raptor Rogue Alloy. The reason for this is it's got a 1,500 kg load rating, which is phenomenal for a larger van. You know you're never anywhere near its limit. And not only that, lifetime warranty. So by doing this choice, I know I've got a proven strong tire and a proven strong wheel. Item number two. It's recovery gear. And you wouldn't think this would need explaining, but the amount of times I've seen people, even on a campsite, I had this at uh, one of the early in the year meets, someone actually came up and asked for a recovery eye. They're running a vehicle and don't even know whether they've got jacks, recovery eyes, things like that. Please, please, please make sure you have got something to change your tire, jack your vehicle up and put a recovery eye on. That should be a bare minimum for any vehicle. However, we're gonna go one step further. You're wanting to build an adventure camper and you don't want to be a pavement princess like so many out there. So you're gonna start to look at these few items. So when it comes to recovery gear, there are a few items that you must buy. The first and the most important is a rope. The reason is these are larger vehicles. You're not gonna get them out by a quick shove. So you're gonna to have to get someone to pull me. Hopefully you've had the sense to go with someone if not, have you got the gear so that you can either self-recover or so that the farmer or someone local that you bump into can come and give you a quick tug? First on the list, a rope. Right, I use a, a longer kinetic rope. The reason being is you can get a little bit of momentum on and you can use that to pull a bigger vehicle. I have used this to pull a 10 plus ton Arctic lorry that was buried up to its axles in grass and it got it out, no issues whatsoever. This is the Terra Firma one from Maltins Off-Road. This is what I would call a soft shackle system. So unlike my other rope that's got the big metal hooks at either end, this has got none. The idea of this, if there's a failure at any point, this is what's flying through the air, not a big piece of metal that will take your head off or take a limb off. Okay, decent length, nice big loop. You can put this through something on itself to another rope, or what you can do with the end of it is you have something that is called a soft shackle. Okay, again, terra firma from Maltins Off-Road. These, dead straightforward, place it through, put the knot through here, that pulls tight, it won't go anywhere. Far safer than a D-link. 
I do still have a bag of D-Links just in case. Those I would say are the bare minimum that you should carry if you want to get tugged off while you're out in the field. Stop it. Going from there, of relying on somebody else, you can start to look at self-recovery. And by self-recovery, I mean something like recovery boards, okay? There is a lot of these out there. You just type that into eBay and you have a look, and I did get these from eBay. There are loads. Max tracks are the go-to and probably the best ones out there. However, I am fully aware that they are very, very expensive. And if you're anything like me, you can count on one hand in the last seven, eight years, how many times you've actually needed these. As Pete said, he's used his more for leveling the vehicle than he has for getting it out. But it is one of those things where if you are stuck, you'd rather look at it than for it. In my experience, the cheaper ones out there just tend to be more brittle and break easier, which means you have to do a little bit more work putting something on the underside of it just to support it, like rocks, a bit of mud, a bit of sand, something like that, so you can drive over this surface and dissipate the weight of the vehicle. The more expensive ones will bend and give you more traction. I've also, over the years, had the fiberglass boards. They're okay, but they are a lot heavier, a lot sharper to the hands, um, and generally not as good. But if that's what you have to hand and that's what you can afford, it is better than having nothing. And the creme de la creme will always be a winch and it is on the list, but in this moment in time, I am prioritizing other things on the camper until I can get that item. Number three, the next item on the list is a compressor. And this is something that is underrated and it's also can be quite expensive. As a bare minimum, I would expect someone to have a small, cheap, 20 quid air compressor in the vehicle, especially if you're doing a bit of off-road, something like that. However, if you are building an adventure van slash swamper, you do not have the flexibility or the pressure on the ground that something like a Land Rover would give you. These do not flex, or if they do flex, it's, it's an inch to a foot on what a Land Rover will do, okay? So you need every bit of grip that you can get from the wheels that are still on the ground. To do that, you need to drop some air out. Once you've dropped the air out, that is the easy game. Little tire deflator or absolute worst case, you're gonna poke a screwdriver or stick in there and sit there forever, okay? But when you've been where you need to go and you need to get on the motorway to get home, you need to put that air back in and that's when a quality compressor is gonna come in, okay? I've got the T-Max. It's in a little bag, you can move it round clip it onto your battery or plug it in, and you've got a hose that comes off so you can get around maybe two tires on one side. There are better systems, um, as you've seen with a few of the other lads that I knock about with that have got the vehicle mounted systems with little auxiliary ports on. Again, it's on my list, but what I've got will work for now. And what I would say is, if you can't afford all this gear, start with the middle of the road gear. So then you've got one of everything. And as you progress in this hobby, this interest, you can then upgrade bits of kit as you go because it's all right saying a buy cheap, buy twice or whatever you want to call it is I would rather have five items that are middle of the road that I have to hand and start using straight away and replace for better ones than having two really good items and really, really, really needing that third one. Item number four. So this is one that gets overlooked and overlooked and overlooked and it burns my head out. You are going to a remote location. As we sit in the woods now, we've got a fire going, we've got sharps in use, we've got axes, we've got so many different things that can either burn, cut, bruise, what have you. And this is underrated, the amount of people that they've even got a headache and they've just got nothing for it. First aid kit. Lucky for me, I've got a very knowledgeable guy, we'll call him Mr 762, sorted me out with a huge kit, okay, thank you very much, still appreciate it brother. It's one of them things that even if you start off with a small kit, please, please, please have it and have it to hand, telling the people that you're camping with where this item is. I've, I am so passionate about this, there is a specific video saying, where's your first aid kit? And I tried to start a trend on this, but everybody is slack. I'm not gonna go into every item of this. There will be so many videos on YouTube of what to put in a vehicle first aid kit. This is bordering on a trauma kit, okay? I don't expect everybody to carry this much gear. However, I tend to knock about in groups of people and I go along the lines of, there are a lot of slack knackers out there, so make sure you've got enough gear for the group. 
that's my problem, not yours. But please, you're going out with your friends and your family. Make sure they're all right. So, a little bit of an odd one now, and this is something that I think being a Land Rover owner teaches you to do. Okay, it is a vehicle first aid kit. And a lot of you with reliable vehicles will be like, what the f is a vehicle first aid kit? Quite simply, it is when you break something, when a hose goes, when an exhaust hangs off, when something breaks, what are you gonna use? Because, again, if you're a pavement princess, this isn't an issue, you just call a man. But if you are genuinely going that little bit further and you break something, how do you get back to a road where you can be recovered? In this bag, we have items such as Billy basic things like jump leads because we all know someone that's left their ignition on. Belts and hoses, tyre repair kits, wheel bearings, more tyre repair kits. Self amalgamating tape. Okay, if you split a hose and you don't have a replacement hose, you can wrap this round and round and round and round, and most of the time it will seal it. Won't be perfect, but it will let you put some more water in and get you a little bit further. Quick steel. Okay, this is a, a putty. I have seen this used multiple times, whether it be the top of a radiator to seal it, to stop the water from coming out of a crack or a bad weld. I have also seen it on a leaking diesel tank that's been hit a bit of uh, a rock or something like that, made the putty up, put it over the leak, jobs are good and it's got us the rest of the weekend around the lanes. Then a whole host of bodgy items like super glue, insulating tape, jubilee clips and a million other things that I'm sure you can use your common sense to put together. But what I am saying is have the items for where it goes wrong that, you know, have a bit of wire in the back of your vehicle that you can strap a broken exhaust up with. Have a bit of cable so if something shorts out or breaks you can put a new quick section in if you need it. Have some connector blocks, screwdrivers, bits and pieces like that that you can get the vehicle further. I won't lecture you any further on this. I'm sure you can uh, come to your own conclusions. I am sure there will be a lot of experts on this one and a lot of people saying their own opinion of it. Hit it in the comment section down below because this is just my five kind of little things that I think you should have as a beginner. The more experienced of you will prioritize other things or they will have all this stuff put together already. So those are the items that I would not leave without sorting before I went on a trip.